Well, this week's Manshake Gutsiest Player of the Week award goes to the 200 gamer from the Warriors, Sean Johnson, becoming just the fifth Warrior to play 200 NRL games. And, Joey, he's almost in career best form oh, at the is. moment. I think he is in career best form, playing tough. I think he was in doubt for this game. I think his wife's about to give birth to yes. her second bubba. Yep. So all the best to, to his family. It's so good to see. I love watching Sean play. But, uh, yeah, career best form. And they're a smoky, the Warriors. Geez, they're playing well. Well, what a night it was for them. 46 to 10 over the Eels at Combank Stadium. That's bringing Parramatta's five game winning streak to an end. Considering, though, we do take into account the fact that the Eels were missing a number yeah. of players Mitchell Moses, yeah. Clint Gutherson, Dylan Brown still out, Regan Campbell Gillard. What did this tell you? about the Parramatta Eels and the Warriors, Sam? Well, you look at the Warriors, they actually didn't even start that great. So it took them 15 minutes to score a try. They had a lot of uh, drop ball early. But that last 15 minutes in the in the first half, they scored, I think they scored four, point, uh, four tries, I think. Uh, and then they kind of ran away with this game. Uh, the Eels, yeah, a, a lot of holes in the Eels at the moment because of all the players that are out. Um, they, they will still be a, a tough team when they get all those players back. But... Um, I've actually really loved watching the um, the Warriors play this year, or the Waz, as all the fans like to call them. What do they call them? The Waz. Really? Yeah, the Waz, yeah. yeah. Um, well, Gal, that was the Warriors' biggest winning margin of the year. What a year that they're in. Yeah, I, I did that game yesterday. And look, the, the, the start of the game um, was pretty even, but you could just tell the Warriors were the better side. They couldn't quite cross the line that many times, but you could just tell they were making metres down the field. They trampled through the, the Eels middle. Every time they went to the right-hand edge of the Paramount Eels, they made a break or, or uh, were very, very dangerous. And then, obviously, at about the 20-minute mark, they, they started to score points and really ran away with it. I, got, I think Paramount are missing their whole spine. It was always going to be a danger game for them against a side who... Had to bounce back from last week. They played at home in front of their home fans last week and were beaten by Souths who haven't been in great form. They were, they were beaten pretty convincingly. So they need to bounce back, and they did, against the weakened side. So if I'm a Parramatta fan, I'm not too concerned. Look, 10, 12 weeks ago, I thought Parramatta were gone, to be honest. Mm. I think their depth was going to struggle. They lost a fair few players uh, from last year, obviously. And uh, look, I think that was just tested again last night. The, the depth isn't, isn't that great, but I think that's the same as all teams. We're going to take four or five players out of any side. Uh, they're going to struggle, and particularly when it's your spine. They had a whole new spine last night. Paramount will be OK, I think. They'll, they'll make the eight without a doubt. Um, the Warriors going well, I agree with you, Joey. They're, they're, they're a good side. Big, strong full pack. Mm. When guys like Fanua Blake and Bunty Afala go forward, like they're very, very hard to stop. They take three, four blokes every single time they're on the ball. They can offload. They've got a pre-line pass. Uh, Ford, I love Ford in the back row. He's a, yeah. he's a, he's he's a, a worker, I, I isn't he? I don't know where yeah. he comes from, but he's he's a, from he makes breaks. He's, he's a good player. He's a really good player. And um, the other bloke from the... Mitch Barnett. Mitch Barnett, good player. Like that was probably tough, his best game. Mate, he's a tough... For a long time. He's a, tough, he's a tough dude. He's a bit yeah. mad. I like him. I think he's a, a good player. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> he, mate, he scored two really Capital good tries last night. Look, the, just the way he hits Great these line-made line yeah. breaks. But the two tries he scored were just... A metre out from the try and just running as hard as he could straight out of the top of blokes. He's, he's a tough dude. And, and what he did too, Gal, he played right back row, left back row. Yeah, played everywhere. in the middle as well. Played, played, a, played a bit everywhere. Yeah. So, yeah. He, he was tough. You, if you, you yeah. won't have to in that side. They've got some good front rowers. You, you throw him in the middle if you needed to. Yeah. He runs a good line on the edge. Yeah. He's, a quality, he's a quality player. Surely, surely Webster's the coach of the year. Yeah. Yeah, oh, if, if he's not coach of the year, you can bloody, I don't know, paint me purple and call me an eggplant. All right, let's Whatever. do it. Let's do it. <laughs> eggplant, isn't that emoji, the eggplant? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there you go. All yes, right, well, you've said, it. you've said it on TV now, you so we'll be holding to that one. Dally M, coach what, of the year. Coach of the year. the last six games. <laughs> Gone. Well, yeah. paint me purple well, and call me an eggplant. <laughs> Ah, that was a classic try celebration. We'll be talking a little bit more about some old school try celebrations in just a moment. But let's quickly talk about this game. The Raiders, uh, they got the job done against the Dragons at Wynn Stadium. Ricky Stewart, though, post game, he wasn't too impressed with his team's performance. Do you understand why? Would you be disappointed with yeah, that? Yeah, it was performance? a low game. It was a low game. <laughs> like, honestly, <laughs> had a cure insomnia this game. He, uh, yeah, halfway through the second half, it was. The game was just treading water, and then they came to life there for a while. Uh, the Dragons scored three tries in seven minutes. Down their right side, the left side defence for the Raiders was terrible, but they got the job done. Joseph Tarpin, he, he absolutely killed it. Jesus, a good player. But uh, look, they're always going to win. But did, at the end of the year, at the end of it. The year they'll say, Well, we got the win. They got the two points. Look, I, I thought at half time it could have been anything. The Dragons were going to win by 
whatever they wanted to. And then, uh, as you said, Joe, the second half, they seemed to just click in the gear, the Dragons, and got uh, come away with three or four tries to get themselves right back in it. But then they, they had an error towards the back end of the game. And Canberra went to, to score another try to put it beyond doubt. But, yeah, it wasn't the best game. Is that going to be their Achilles heels, the Raiders? The fact that, because I know Ricky was quite disappointed, it's the 80 minute performance that he was speaking about. Yeah, well, they're sitting fourth at the moment. I think they've won 10 out of their last 12 games they've played. Um, but they're the only team in that top four that are a uh, minus on the for and against. So um, they haven't put in a, and that's probably the re one of the reasons why they're flying under the radar a little bit, is because they haven't been clinical in any game they played uh, so far. I don't think they've had an 80, 80 minute performance uh, for the year, but um, they gave Dragons a chance in this game to come back. And, and win it and um, the, the the Raiders were like ready to roll over at one point mm -hmm. in time Lomax decided to kick into the game uh, and, and come into his own in that second half and um, yeah it could have gone anyway but... was good. Amon was good for the Dragons too. Yeah. I, I haven't to be fair I know they've got this young spine coming through the Dragons I, I haven't thought too much of them to be honest um, but Amon Probably had the best game I've seen him play. He was very dangerous on the right end edge. Every time he touched the ball, big right foot step. He beat the first defender more often than not. Made a couple of line breaks. So it gives Shane Flanagan something to work with. I thought he was pretty good. And Zach Lomax, uh, as we said, he he went to fullback. He actually got his hand on the ball a hell of a lot. And was hard. Look, he's a big, strong man. He's he's a, he's very, very tough. And when he injects himself in the game, he, he's very, very hard to handle. He's probably just got to do it a little bit more. And uh, he's a quality player. Joey, do they just bite the bullet and just get the, let those young guys just play in the halves, just right now? Give them a crack, or is that going to is that going to wreck their confidence? Um, I see a moan moving forward as more of a lock. I think yeah. he's going to get bigger and stronger, and he's a more he's a running five eight. But they have to go all in for Sullivan at halfback and um, Sloan at fullback. Yeah, because really there's no real quality halves on the market. Not on the market, no. no. There's a couple in, in England that would be worth a try, but uh, yeah, off the top of my head, there's no real world-class halves. Yeah. Uh, we, um, we did see one of the best try celebrations in that game, mm. so we thought we'd take a little bit of a walk down memory lane to see some of the all-time try, try celebrations that we've seen. Who remembers this <laughs> one? Yeah. <laughs> oink, oink. Oh, this is good. <laughs> oink, oink. I think he's skinny these days, Pete. <laughs> oh, I doubt it. <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, we've got one of Joey as well. Do you remember this one, Joey? Oh, hang on. Uh, this one, here we go. Oh, yeah. The uh, there's this question is... marks about. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Was, that a, was that a cigar? Yeah, yeah a cigar. Was that a cigar? A cigar. Yeah. Big, big fat yeah. cigar. I don't know what. Yeah. It was before my time. I was in my head there. I was invented you're, the vape. You're vaping, yeah. <laughs> yeah strawberry vapes. Yeah. It was a cigar, kids. Yeah. Did you did you did you plan that one? A long time coming? Did you? Oh, I don't know. Or is it just <laughs> another one? Another, really... another chapter of you know, what one was of, I doing? One of my favourites was only a few years ago. This I'm pretty sure this was a tried July celebration. Celebration as well. It involves the shark scale, uh, and this was a, a wrestling one. I think. Oh yeah, the, yeah, the boys there. Yeah, yeah, yeah this was. Yeah. Brad Muelli and Jack Williams. A lot had gone into this one. Yeah. <laughs> Who does that? Is that The Rock? Oh, I'm not sure who it is, but that, that was good. That one. I actually thought it was for a split second. Yeah. I forgot yeah. that it was Try July yeah. when it happened. Yeah, uh, and then we have uh, we have another one from Wendell Wendell Sailor here. <laughs> Big Dell. That was, that was the first that ever All Stars, of All -Stars match, game. Yeah. The first yeah. ever try. Yeah. And he does the didgeridoo. There you Burger. go. Yeah. There you go. There you go. Loving it. Delicious. Um, all right, well, let's dive into the game from last night. The Rabbitohs and the Bulldogs. This was a really exciting game. It was a uh, very topsy-turvy. The Rabbitohs, they started uh, scoring first through Burgess there, but it was the Bulldogs in the end who just put on a, a right. quite a strong score, 36 to 32 in the end. Gal, what did you make of this one? Well, I was listening to the first half uh, on radio on the way home. I did the game before, and then I watched the second half, and... The dogs, more reports, were playing pretty good the first half. I, I love that play there from Matt Burton. On the right-hand side of the field, Matt Burton has almost stood exclusively on the left-hand side of the field for the dogs. And I think if you're going to be a dominant ball player in the team, you've got to play all, all over the park. And the fact he went to the right-hand side of the field and helped set up a try, I thought was a big plus for him and for the dogs. Um, but, um, look, they, 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 they did the job, the dogs. They, they, they got the job done. South come right back into the game and made it very, very exciting at the end of it. And... Um, Look, had, had a, probably had an opportunity to equal it up, if not win the game, but couldn't quite get there. And the Dogs, you know, they, they, they got the win, so well done to them.
After, Joe, after a really disappointing week last week, like they got hammered last yeah. week. Yeah, Joe, how close was Matty Burton to being selected in New South Wales? Yeah, he was close. Yeah. Really close. Um, I think maybe had time again, he would have been good on the bench in game one. Yeah. And then, uh, there some injuries out wide or when Turbo went off. But, you know, yeah. he's, a, he's a good player. I think Toby what Sexton... that laser? That's not... What, yeah. Uh, yeah. Oh, the yeah, laser, that's yeah. That's yeah, that, that's no good. We don't want to see that. At all. Um, this was, it was a poor, pretty poor uh, from one of the, the fans. the security found the him, person. D- found the person during the game and yeah. kicked them out. They well, were so pretty so quick they to... Yeah. can't do that. Yeah, yeah they were pretty quick to act stuff on it, like It's just like, the players are out there doing a job. Mm. They're entertaining the fans at the ground and do yeah. things like that. It's dangerous. Yeah. And it shouldn't, shouldn't be happening. You can yeah. you can heckle, but then 100%. when it, you're getting... They pay their money to go and, and heckle and boo you and whatever they want to do. They get away with saying a hell of a lot, let me tell you. But you can't be doing things like that. Like, that's not, not good. Have you ever experienced anything from the fans, Joey? I think I remember watching story. God pulled a for me. <laughs> 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 yeah. Uh, we had a try scoring a couple of times. Was it in Queensland or not? No, no, was no. It, was no, it no a... they loved me up there. Belmore? <laughs> yeah. At Belmore, this bloke's hammering me about something. And I've told him, you know, go and... Yeah. I was only... I, I... I think it was in reserve. I was playing reserve. I was only a baby. Next time I come down, he's going, yeah, you're going to say nothing, something now, mate. Pull out a oh, flick knife. <laughs> Mummy, help. <laughs> yeah. Wasn't your brother watching you, was it? No, no. no. <laughs> He's on the hit list. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and there was one moment in this match last night, though. Uh, a bit confusing at the time. Uh, it was a big hit uh, for Sutton going down. But Tane Milne, he was placed on report... And that was initially all that happened. And then as uh, Sutton lay down and was getting attended to by the medical staff, the bunker then reviewed this and then decided that Tane Milne deserved 10 minutes in the sin bin. And mind you, the match review committee has come out this morning. He has not been handed any suspension whatsoever. It is just a monetary fine. No, so from every angle that I was able to look at, I didn't see uh, any contact with the head at all, really. He he almost misses him. Um, So... Um, we do wish him all the best with the injury as well, but um, yeah, it was a bit of a bizarre one. Yeah, you um, don't reckon there was contact? I thought, I thought, I thought his chin hit his shoulder. I, I thought it was an accident, totally accidental, but I, I did think his, his chin hit his shoulder. Totally accidental, didn't deserve 10 in the sim bin, but I thought he, he did raise up a little bit and his chin hit him on the shoulder. It was just more the fact that it was, it was initially just put on report. Yeah, look, there wasn't and if a lot the game had moved on, then yeah. that's if all he, that would If happen. he got up and played the ball, there'd be no issue, mm. without yeah. a doubt. Look, and I hope he's all right. I'm not trying to downplay mm. the pain he's in or what happened to him. I've got no doubt his chin hit him on the shoulder. Mm. Um, but I, I think the fact he got 10 minutes in the sim in was pretty harsh for that, for mm. that one. I mean, we, we're going back to Magic Round last year to see things like that being put in the sim bin, so... I thought that was a bit tough, but um, I do understand it's a monetary fine, but I I, I did think there was slight contact with Mm -hmm. the chin. All right, uh, let's talk about uh, the Sharks and the Tigers. Gal, we were sidelined for this one on Thursday night at Combank Stadium. Uh, The Sharks coming away with the victory on this occasion. What did you make of this game and and this performance by Spinella? Look, I thought the the first half wasn't wasn't great. They had two... Look, at the end of the day, they had two defensive errors, both in the first half. Besides that, the, the, the... Tigers didn't literally look like scoring. The Sharks could have been ahead by more at half time, yes, but in the second half that they kicked in the gear and ended up scoring 36 points. Nico only kicked uh, three from seven goals too, so it could have been into the 40s. Uh, they scored 50 last week, scored 40, uh, could have scored 40 this week. So their try scoring ability uh, is an issue, and I think their defence is getting better. As I said, the Tigers, there was two defensive errors. The Tigers scored two tries. Um, all in all, that they got the win, a good performance against a side who were pumped the week before. There was always going to be a bounce back factor coming, and the Tigers tried really, really hard, but the, the class of the Sharks got out of them in the end. How much change did you see from the Tigers from what happened last week against the Cowboys to, to that performance? Uh, they still missed tackles in this game, but not as many. Uh, I thought they were uh, a lot better than they, they were against the Cowboys. But um, I, I, actually, um, I actually thought the Sharks should have actually done the same thing the Cowboys did to them um, and, and put 1,000 points on. Uh, the Sharks had every opportunity. I, I love watching the Sharks attack. They've got some great attack uh, in the way they sweep. They, they're probably one of the better teams at running that, that block line. Um, like my only question, and my go to you, Gal, is that um, are the Sharks pretenders? They, oh, they, they can't beat anyone oh, yeah, in that yeah, top yeah, eight. Yeah. Well, they seem to beat all these bottom eight teams Mate, and fairly that, convincingly. That, that, that comes down to whatever narrative people want to make. I mean, last year they were beating teams that weren't in the top eight, yeah. but they were in the top eight the year before. Yeah. This year they're beating someone in the top eight. They're, they're beating also beating the Roosters, uh, the Cowboys, the Parramatta Eels. 
who aren't who weren't in the top eight around the top eight this year, but they're in the top eight last year. So yeah. whatever people can work it the way they want to work it. Look, they haven't beaten the sides they want to beat, uh, like like the, the Panthers and the South Sydney side. They got the opportunity. I think in the last five rounds they play a lot of them top sides, so that'll that'll go to show where they are. But as I said, this narrative that they can't beat a top eight side. It's just, it's, it's worked and shuffled around. So you're saying, no, However, they're not pretenders? Want, no, they're not pretenders at all, okay. no. They're, they're a good side. And look, this, this thing about the Sharks, one thing Craig Fitzgibbon does not do is make excuses or reasons why they're not playing good. Now, I yeah. look at other teams, particularly on the bottom of the ladder, they, they talk about, oh, we've got this guy out, we've got that guy out, we've got our two front rowers Name and out. shame, who are you talking about? No, uh, well, <laughs> yeah, Gus last week, to be honest. <laughs> when, that, when the Sharks beat him by 50, yeah, they had three forwards out. Well, Luke Thompson hasn't played a game for He's played one game for him in a year and a half. They had the two front rows out. In the same game, Sharks had their two front rows out. They've still got two front rows out in uh, Royce Hunt and big, big Braden Hemuelli. He's been fantastic for them. Uh, obviously, um, they've still got Kay Dykes. He won't play again this year. So the, the Sharks got injuries too, but Fitzy does not talk about it. He doesn't make an excuse for the side. They, the team that goes out on the paddock has, a, has a, an opportunity and a, an expectation to perform, and they do that week in, week out. Um, as I said, I, I, I'm passionate Sharky, as you know, and I do get quite protective of the boys. I know, that's why. I think, <laughs> I know, yeah, I knew, I knew you, you knew I'd bite. Um, but no, I think they're, 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 a, they're a good side. But do you think that we'll actually know in the coming weeks, we just saw on screen there, who they have coming up in the next five rounds. Do you think that that is going to be the test and whether we turn, work out whether they are well, look, genuine Well, look, every week's a test. Every yeah. week's a test. I, every week, week and week's a, te- a test. They've got when they Panthers play. coming yeah, up. Yeah, they've got the Panthers coming up. Warriors. Sydney coming up. Warriors away, which is going to be a good test this week. So, yeah, we'll, we'll get to see where they're at, um, you know, in, in the coming weeks. But... If they go out there and beat them sides, all of a sudden they're going to start being premiership favourites. Like, they just can't win the poor blokes. So all they've got to do is play play whoever's in front of them that week, worry about that week, go out there and perform, and then worry about the next week when that game's over. So we'll wait and say, oh, look, they're a good side. They're not up in the top four for no reason. Um, and as I said, the narrative around the fact they can't be the top eight side just suits whoever wants to make it and whatever side they're playing that week. As I said, there's, there's teams from last year's top eight who aren't there now that they've beaten convincingly. They'll be OK. They'll be in the semi-finals and, as, as we know, it's a new competition when they get there and anything can happen. Joey, what's your assessment? Are they contenders? I think we'll know more when they play Penrith away. I think it was around 21. Mm. And they play the next week South away. Until then, I'm sort of not convinced. Mm. And we'll get a good read on them then. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, so that's coming up in three weeks. Because also, too, they've had all of their buys, haven't they? The they've had their three buys, yeah. They're done for the year. So their last, uh, I think, eight games to go, eight, eight games straight. Um, and they, they understood that and they're prepared for that. They, they've trained for that accordingly and uh, they'll be fresh enough each week and uh, they'll be fine. Well, that'll be a big game, Sharks v Panthers, the real test for... Well, this knowledge. week, they play the Warriors this week, don't they? Warriors, yeah. 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 So, but I think it starts this week. This is a good test for them this week. The Warriors played well last night, as we know, and uh, over there they'll want to fire up after they didn't play so well last week, so... Good test this week. Come All on, right. Shark, he's up, up. Let's go. <laughs> up, up, Cronulla. Right, We've got to put up with this every week. <laughs>